Okay, so right now we're going to learn how to add uh, custom fonts to your salient website. Um, there is an article um, on themenexer.tixie.com that has some instructions uh, for you, but I thought I'd also make a quick little um, video to show you how it works. These instructions are very good and you can see everything here. Um, but I had a little trouble doing it myself, so I figured I would just make a video. Uh, the first thing you need to do is make sure you have the font you want in these three types. Um, so wherever you've gotten your font, the font I'm going to add today is called, whoops, Billy Ohio font. Um, It says it's free for personal use, so we're going to have to pay them. You always want to make sure if you're using something for anything commercial um, that you that you have the right license for it, because if you're if you don't, uh, you could get in a lot of trouble. So you just want to make sure to download. Okay, we're back. So um, I realized I need to show you how to add the font files to the back end of your website. Um, so I use HostGator for my hosting. You can log into whoever if you chose a different hosting package. No problem. And we want to go in our control planner down here to our file manager. <clears throat> um, this particular website, uh, judybayloff.com, I she has another website, so I'm just hosting this as, a, as an add-on domain. Um, but what we want to do is make sure to look at this um, directory here, WP Content Theme Salient Child. Oh, we need to install the child theme. Oh, my goodness. One moment. Um, okay, so we're back in our back end here. We go to Appearance Themes. What a child theme does is when we make changes like this to the back end, um, and then the theme updates, we're not deleting the, the um, updates that we've made. So what we're going to do is add new. And you should have gotten the child theme as part of the download when you bought the salient package. Um, so we're just going to upload this. I just have it saved here. But you'll have it saved wherever it is that you saved the download um, when you first Got it. If you don't know where to find it, you can go back to themeforest.net um, where you bought Salient um, and just re-download it from there as many times as you need. Um, so you can see here it says the parent theme um, Salient 13.0.6 is currently installed. So you know that it won't let you activate a child theme without you having the parent theme installed. So we're going to activate. Uh, and this shouldn't change anything on your website. It's just a place... Um, so you don't change, we're, like we're about to upload these fonts and we're going to do it into the child theme so that when that website updates and you have to upload update salient, uh, you're not deleting or losing all this work you're doing right now. Um, okay, so we're going to go back to our file manager here. Let's just refresh this. Um, and we want to go to Judy Bailoff. WP content. And remember, if you don't know where to go, themes, salient child, you can just refer back to, um, sorry, this directory here. So it says WP content, themes, salient child. We're going to make a folder called fonts. New folder. It's called fonts. Okay. That folder is empty as it should be. And then we wanna just drop our font files in there. Now I have downloaded, I made sure to get the licensing for this font that I'm using um, called Billy Ohio. And I have put the font files into a folder um, for the book I'm working on. Um, if you don't have these three types, so you can see the type that you need here, a WOFF, an OTF, and a TTF. Um, if you don't have those three types, you can go to any kind of um, web font converter, um, online at font face generator. 
So here you can upload your TTF. Most, you're, mo you're most likely going to have an OTF um, when you download a free font from Font Squirrel or one of those other fun websites. Um, so you can go there to, and they will literally just drop out the, the font types that you need. So you don't need a WOF2, you need a TTF, and you need an OTF, but you're going to be um, adding the OTF yourself. So you'll have at least one of them. Um, okay, so what we want to do is add the upload and we can select and I am going to devotional fonts. I, I don't know which ones I'm really using here if I'm using all of them, but I can drag and well, actually let's just do a drag and drop. That's easier. We highlight these and just put them over here. And so the this uh, the file manager here is like that's what HostGator where they're holding all your files. So they're not really existing like on your website. It's in their servers, which also is where your website exists. So um, now that we have those, um, what we can do is go to our website and we're going to need to install. A plugin for custom. Um, okay, we have the CSS code first, and then we're going to have to get this code snippets plugin. So there's several steps here. First, let's do the plugins. And we're going to say add new. And again, you can just see it. I'm sorry, I'm jumping around a lot. That's not what I need. I'm just going to move those all in there. I don't need that. Here we go. Um, it tells you right here the code snippets plugin, and that's how we're going to add some PHP because you don't really want to do that. Code snippets. And that it will just bring up. Okay, look at that. 500,000 active installations. Perfect. And this just makes changes to the actual code of the website that you don't really want to mess with unless you know what you're doing because, you know, you can break things very easily once you get back in there. But if you know, you know, if you have very specific directions on what to put in there, then it's not really a problem. Okay, so we have our code snippets and usually we'll see that uh, over here somewhere. Here we go, snippets. Um, and those are just, we can just delete these. And we can just go delete all of those. And we're going to add a new one. And we're going to say at font base. So the code is the question mark PHP. And you're literally just, you can just copy this whole thing right here. And it even gives you a screenshot of what it's going to look like. Boom. And we want to make sure to click only run in administration area. And the names here are, these are the names of the fonts. So we're going to want to change these. I'm going to change this. As you can see, this will be based on the code that you put into your custom code here, your at font face. So we go here, CSS script. We have this website has no custom code yet. Um, and that's another thing that we're going to take from here. So they added a whole bunch of different fonts here. Um, we'll add three, I guess. So you can just copy that, control C, control V. And what you want to make sure you're doing is this name needs to match this name.
So I think it will actually be better for us to Sorry, I think I think it's better for everyone to make sure these don't have spaces in them because it just messes up stuff. You can do Philly, Ohio. Just put a dash or an underscore in there. You can do it before you upload the things, obviously. Philly, Ohio, underscore swash. For whatever reason, websites really don't like having spaces in names. It can, can cause problems, so it's better just to do it this way. Even though I don't, I'm not sure I'm going to be using these other versions. I'm just putting them all in. Rename Billy Ohio Dua. Okay, so now we have those. These are exactly the names that you want to be putting in here. So let's just do the regular Billy Ohio to start. So we have the Billy hyphen Ohio dot TTF. So we're going to so here's our TTF and we're going to say Billy Ohio dot TTF. Um, we have the Billy hyphen Ohio dot OTF. So here, we just delete this and say billy-ohio.otf. And the other one has a slightly, we have billy underscore ohio dash web font dot wolf. So we're going to say, and it's just important that these are exact, billy underscore ohio dash or hyphen web font dot wolf. Hyphen web font. And then we have the dot wolf. Okay, and we want to rename the font family name up here. We're going to say Billy Ohio. Okay, so this name here that you put here is important to your little snippet here. So we're going to say Billy Ohio with a dash gives us Billy Ohio and we can get rid of and you want to make sure like not to just so you see this one doesn't have a comma after it so we're gonna try uh, to add one more here and we will add the Billy Ohio Dua Let's see Billy Ohio Dua OTF. Copy this. Paste that there. Billy Ohio do a TTF. And the last, the wolf that's a little different is Billy underscore Ohio underscore do a slash web font or dash web font. Billy, Ohio, do a web bot. Okay, save these changes. And I can also obviously get rid of this font paste here. I don't need that. Save those changes and we have Billy, Ohio. And then for this, We'll get rid of all these because we don't need them. And you just want to make sure since that's the last one, there's no comma there. And those little things are so important when you're changing code like this. Um, so if it doesn't work, go back here and just, you know, check every little comma and everything because those kind of things. So you just, I just want to make sure that this is exactly what I'm putting here. Whoopsie. I, Hi, Mom. Okay, sorry, that was my mom calling. Um, okay, so we have our code here. We have saved the changes and activated. Um, and now when we go to our, we've saved our changes here, I hope. Right now we're just gonna update this real quick. Uh, 
Um, and we go to our typography over here. And we should be able to see them up here in custom fonts. So we're gonna leave Baskerville and we're gonna look at H1 and see if it works. It's not gonna show up here, so don't worry about that. Um, but let's see how it works. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, I'm doing an incognito window just to make sure it fully reloads. That'll get rid of any cookies or anything. Okay, the question is, do I have any H1 content anywhere? I might not. Okay, let's look at that. Pages, all pages. Let's just try this real quick. I don't actually think I want this here, but just to see if our H1 works. It's not gonna show up here either, but it should show up when we do this. Look at that, good stuff. And you notice that, um, it took a second to load it, which is, you know, an unfortunate side effect, but that is okay. I think that looks great. Um, okay, yeah, that is it. And make sure if your font has some kind of um, rules about uh, giving credit or something or totally free commercial license, or if your license is only for uh, a certain number of products or something like that. They're, all the licenses are different, so it's really important that you uh, be sure to read that. Okay, thanks, guys. See you soon.